For this Title V project, Access and Success for Hispanic Low Income Technical Students, we completed a course redesign for South Plains College first semester. The team consists of Don Kinneman, Delia Gonzalez, Connie Wild, Mandy Cole, and Jan Buckskimper. Go. Nursing education requires an in-depth knowledge of nursing concepts and real-life application of learned concepts and skills. Community colleges are known for smaller class sizes and opportunities for individualized instruction. Effective teaching methods should encompass many different learning styles to maximize student learning. <clears throat> Students may fall into several preferred learning styles, including visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. With the implementation of the changes specified below, student learning, comprehension, retention, and NCLEX pass scores will increase. First semester of the ADN program consists of five courses. These include health assessment, skills one, skills two, foundations, and clinical. For foundations of nursing practice, we've made the following changes. All didactic exams will be administered in this course. In the past, we had tests assigned in RNSG 1105 and 1144 based on the skills being taught and topics not associated with the skill were assigned in foundations. The content and tests will be taught and given, a, given with the time of skill demonstrations. ATI is an objective e-learning tool used to improve student outcomes. ATI includes online learning modules, skills videos, and test taking modules that will be utilized in first semester. Using ATI will improve student test outcomes, NCLEX, lower attrition rates, and allow students and instructors to identify any weaknesses, allowing for faculty to design an individualized remediation plan. Administration of ATI exams in first semester will allow faculty to identify student deficits, allowing future faculty revisions in content delivery. The ATI Foundation and Nutrition Assessments will now be included based on past program outcomes on NCLEX scores. Nationwide pharmacology is an area of weakness identified among nursing programs. To increase student comprehension, modules, individualized pharmacology quizzes, and testing on medications for specific body systems will be incorporated throughout the semester. So for example, for foundations, we're going to cover the concepts and topics in class here, and then immediately we're going to move to the lab where we can apply these skills in an individualized setting. RN11, RNSG 1105 and RNSG 1144 is nursing skills 1 and 2. 1105, which is skills 1, is the basic introduction of nursing skills. RNSG 1144 is skills 2 and more advanced, building on the foundations of skills 1. Some of the changes we've made is um, the grading rubrics for each of the skills were changed from pass fail with three attempts for each skill to a 100 point grading scale. The students will be evaluated by direct faculty observation, allowing one video recorded remediation attempt and peer feedback. The point scale allows the student to be unsuccessful on one skill and continue working towards skill mastery, improving student retention. All skill grading rubrics were updated according to latest evidence-based practice and ATI. Previously, instructors demonstrated skills during class time and then expected the students to practice after class. To increase student success and learning, the instructor will demonstrate the skill in the simulation lab in small groups um, and then students will serve as the observer, grader, and participant for each of the skills, allowing for increased comprehension as students teach, critique, and perform each skill. A boot camp will be added to increase student success and skill mastery. Boot camp will include one week of specific skill stations with individualized instruction in small groups. Students will have opportunity to practice, ask questions, and gain confidence in basic nursing skills. The students will be evaluated on these skills the following week. Practicum 1, um, and then skills 2, practicum 2, and a final practicum. During the practicum, the students will perform skills learned during boot camp, applying critical thinking, pri prioritization, while providing ho comprehensive, holistic patient care. 
Okay, some of the technology that we um, utilize and we are incorporating, um, one of the ones we use at ReCenter, and so at the ReCenter there are high fidelity mannequins in which those mannequins actually breathe, they can talk back to the patients or to the students, and so when they're over there, they'll actually do their physical assessment on those um, patients over there that actually have pulses where you can feel it. This is a, a, it's a high fidelity, but it's not as high fidelity as the one at the Reef Center. Here in the lab, we do a lot of, um, we have a lot of technology. We have our computer systems. We have, we've incorporated the scanner machine. So we're trying to incorporate things that the students will actually see in the hospital setting. And so we have programmed the computer where we actually have our pharmacology, um, information, the, the MAR, the doctor's orders, and they will, and we'll, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But all of that is here. In the lab, as you saw before, we did the small, small groups, then we broke down into even smaller groups, and they went through each one of those. And based on that, then we have them do a scenario in which they have to put all those pieces together, as Dom was saying earlier about using their critical thinking, looking at that patient. And so with that, they're going to put that scenario together with this mannequin right here. And with this mannequin, we actually can set it so that it will actually breathe, it'll have a pulse, it can do blood pressure, they can check the pulse ox, and they can scan the medications. We'll let some students demonstrate now how that goes. Good morning. We're student nurses here to get your vital signs. My name is Melanie. My name's Ashley. And I'm Denise. Okay, I'm going to scan your bracelet now. Can you tell me your name and date of birth, please? Okay, and are you allergic to anything? Thank you. I'm just going to put this pulse ox onto your finger now. It won't hurt. It won't pinch at all. Now, one of the differences with our, this mannequin versus the ones at the Sims Lab, the Sims Lab would actually answer back whenever they ask for their patient's name and date of birth. Um, this one doesn't do that, but they can still do the other pieces of that. Okay, I'm going to take your blood pressure. Can you tell me what your blood pressure normally runs? Okay. 150 over 60. Okay. And are you in any pain right now? On a scale of 0 to 10, 0 being no pain, 10 being the worst pain ever, could you rate your pain? 2. Okay. And where's your pain at? In my belly. Okay. Mr. Smith, I'm going to go ahead and get your temperature and your respiration. So I'm just going to get your temperature in your ear. You may feel or hear a little beep. So even though the mannequin doesn't speak to the, the, the students, you can have a student feed that mannequin, and so they're giving that feedback to them, and that's just good communication skills that we're, we're utilizing with that. Okay, let me get your respirations. Once they have done their respirations, pulse, their blood pressure, then I can look, to, they'll tell me what they got, and we can determine whether or not they were close, we usually have about a two or a three, you know, difference in what we consider okay. And so I can look to say, okay, well, you're off just a little bit. So let's try this again. We also have um, a double-headed stethoscope. So if the student is having trouble, you can, um, we can actually listen with the student. I'm going to get my helper here to get me one. So if maybe they're missing both then we can both be listening. I'm going to come over on that side. And so that I can help the student as we're doing this and monitor that, you know, so they can see when it stops or it starts. We can do that on, you know, the heart. We can do that with um, multiple things that we do with the blood pressure. So after the students practice the skills, they'll be tested in the practicum we discussed earlier. If they're unsuccessful, they get the opportunity to remediate. This is the room that the remediation would occur. It'll be video recorded and um, using a specific 100 point scale for remediation. Technology changes will be implemented throughout the courses. Each course will have its own blackboard shell in which learning modules, PowerPoints, ATI demonstration videos, and rubrics will be found. Scanners have been added to the classroom to allow for electronic submission of assignments via Blackboard. 
A combination of low and high fidelity mannequins and equipment will be utilized at Leveland and Reese campuses in different scenarios, as well as laptop computers for electronic documentation, scanners for scanning patient medications and identification, and utilizing the PIXIS to obtain medications overall simulating the hospital environment. This is an example of our PIXIS, um, just another technology we're going to be using where the students can come scan in just like the hospital environment and receive their and pull their medications for their patient. Prior to the fall changes, we used to test certain skills before um, and then they would go to the hospital before they had finished all the skills and hadn't passed them in the simulation lab. Now we're going to test with these boot camps and practicums we're going to test all the skills before we go to the hospital so that the students will have every opportunity um, to perform those skills in the hospital setting. In our clinical courses, we've made a couple of changes. In response to student evaluations and recommendations, the clinical grading rubric has changed to a 100-point scale, providing more objectivity and less subjectivity. The student will receive deductions based on the Board of Nursing four roles in nursing and program outcomes. In previous semesters, if the student was not successful in the first clinical experience, the student was not allowed to attend. In previous semesters, if the student was not successful in the first clinical experience, the student was not allowed to attend any other clinical and failed the course. Allowing a, an average of a 77 on all assignments, students can remediate to show progression and profic proficiency in application of knowledge and skills, improving program retention. Assignments were modified to include student reflection and daily clinical evaluation. Students will complete self-evaluations based on program graduate outcomes and the DECS, which is the Differentiated Essential Competencies Outcomes. We feel with all of the changes that we've made for this next semester coming up in fall, that we're going to see a huge increase in, um, it's going to allow us to identify the deficits of students earlier and become up with an individualized plan for them to succeed. It's also going to improve um, our pass rates and overall student success.